Welcome to the Chicora Church of the Nazarene. This is our Good Friday service, and we're going to read the seven words of the cross. The shouts of praise are over. We no longer hear Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed be he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. But rather the shouts, crucify him, have taken over and prevailed. And now Jesus is dying on the cross. A reading from the Bible, Isaiah 53, 3. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity. As one from whom others hide their faces, he was despised and we held him of no account. Luke 23, verses 32 through 38. Two others also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, the one on his right and one on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching, but the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself if he is Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldier also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine, and saying, If you are the king of Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of Jews. With the first word, Christ had already taken away all the excuses of mankind as to why we should take revenge. Agony, pain, frustration on the cross, and yet Jesus forgives. He has built a bridge between God and humanity, one that is never broken as long as we accept his forgiveness and use it in our lives. Forgiveness is difficult, for we are so often hurt. But as he built the bridge to us, let us build it to the world with the words, I forgive you. Isaiah 53, 12. Therefore I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death, and he was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Luke 23, 39-43 One of the criminals who were hanged there kept jeering him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same oh. sentence as con of condemnation? Yeah. And we... It and we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. With Christ there, it, with Christ there is it the hope of a better future. The thief on the cross who has accepted Jesus looks ahead to eternal life and peace. For him it comes to at the end of his earthly existence. But for us, the taste of paradise is very much in the present. Today, as we accept Christ, he enables us to find love, peace, strength, and joy with life has to offer, but with but which is often buried in the suffering and hate of the world. Today you shall be with him in paradise. Isaiah 53, 10 through 11. Yet it was with the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering of sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make my righteous, many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquity. John 19, 23 through 27. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic, 
Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, just cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says, They divided my clothes among themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And what is, And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, sister Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciples whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. And then he said to the disciples, Here is your mother. And from that hour the disciples took her into his own home. Even in his agony, Jesus did not forget those close to him. Here is his mother and John, his disciple, left standing before the cross, bewildered. Her son, why did it come to this? His master, what was he going to do now? But their plight was not forgotten, their loneliness not left as it was. Christ took care of his responsibilities to those loved ones. They were given to each other's care. May we, too, take care of our responsibilities with such love, concern, and devotion as Christ did. Isaiah 53, 6. All we like sheep have gone astray, and we have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of all of us. Matthew 27, 45 through 49. From noon on, darkness came over the whole world until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, Emma, Shabasa. That is, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? Then some bystanders heard it, and they said, This man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them got and ran and got a sponge, filled it with some sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come and save him. As there was such a word of despair as this sentence spoken while he hung on the cross, his years of strength, authority, success, and calmness in the face of danger all left him at that moment. He felt alone, even God seemed too far away. They had empty feelings that we all have had at one time or another. We may all ask the question, is Worth, is life worth all the trouble? But this is his statement of despair. We know that he understands us and helps us even in our despair, for he knows he and will overcome it by himself and himself. When strength stands no more, the strength of Christ leads us through. Isaiah 53, 7. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth like a lamb that had been led to the slaughter and like a sheep that before its shears is silent. So he did not open his mouth. John 19, 28 through 19, or er, 29. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, In order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A full jar of sour wine was standing there, so they put a sponge full of wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. Again, Jesus feels that what is it means to be human, so that we can identify with him and he with us. He was thirsty. There isn't one human emotion that Christ cannot identify with. 
He knows our hurt, tiredness, failure, anger. He was even tempted to escape the cross, but did not. All of our feelings are wrapped up in his life. We can, we can get strapped, trapped by our ne negative feelings, but should we not let him help us deal with our feelings so that a better life might be ours through his love? Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases. Yet we account him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. John 19, 30, 37. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of pre preparation, the Jews did not want the bodies left at the cross during the Sabbath, especially because that Sabbath was a day of great sol sol solemnity. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified men broken and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. He who saw this has testified so that you also may believe. His testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth. These things occurred so that the scripture might be fulfilled. None of the bones shall be broken. And again, another passage of scripture says, they will look on the one whom they have pierced. It is finished. His life is over. The work he did is now complete. He has accomplished what he came to do. First, to give a humanity a better understanding of God and his love and concern for us. Second, to give us a better way to live our lives. Third, to die so that we might participate in all the benefits of his resurrection. We live, yet are able to partake of Christ's love and concern and help. We live out his victory and so we are able to finish our lives of love here on earth, too. Isaiah 53, 8 and 9. By his perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future, where he was cut off <clears throat> from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people? They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Luke 23, 44 to 49. It was now about noon, <clears throat> and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, while the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. And when all the crowds who had gathered there for the spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home, beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance, watching these things. In the final analysis, there is just complete dependence on God. He placed everything in the hands of the Father. There is no other kind of victory than that of returning to the one from whom he, we came. Faith has its beginning and end in God. So it was for Jesus and so it can be for us. May we dedicate all that we do in the life to God's name, that he might guide our actions <clears throat> by his love. He gave all us, he gave all for us, and may we give all to him. Christ's life on earth ended, but there is the glorious life of the resurrection and the gift of eternal life. Let us look toward that with joy so that his life will not be in vain but that through us, he will transform this world. A final reading. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits. And in his word I hope. 
My soul waits for the Lord, more than the watchman for the morning, more than the watchman for the morning. This is the message that we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not live according to the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. Behold, the tomb is sealed, and the Savior is inside, is now resting. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 